Welcome to the Front Study for Observers. This show is based on our network of observers. They're ordinary people who tell us what's going on where they are and send in photos and videos to document it. We check everything here in Paris and bring the best to you. We begin today in Mali, West Africa. French and Malian troops are currently battling to retake the northern part of the country from Islamist forces who took control last year. Back in the south, people who look like they come from the north, light-skinned Arabs and Tuareg nomads, find they are coming under suspicion of being Islamists themselves. In one recent incident in the capital Bamako, local residents called the police to arrest a group of men they thought were suspicious. Our observer Alassane Sidibe has the story. There's a hotline that's been set up so people can call in tips about anyone who looks foreign or suspicious. In this case, it was just some people who were mistaken for Islamists because of how they looked. It was a case of mistaken identity. They had gathered in a mosque and local residents called the security forces so they could check their identity and arrest them. In fact, they were just performing dawah, trying to convert non-Muslims to Islam by saying prayers and inviting them to the mosque. There's nothing sinister about it. When they were arrested, they had no weapons, just their personal affairs. People said they were armed. But if that were the case, what did they do with their weapons? The people who came under suspicion are from the north of Mali. They're Tuaregs, or Arabs wearing turbans and robes called Bubu. But just because someone's wearing a turban doesn't mean he's an Islamist. There have to be identity checks. But they have to be efficient, not just based on suspicion. Next, we go to eastern China to a hotel called Arirang, not far from the border with North Korea. Now, Arirang is the name of the annual festival in North Korea that is known for its choreographed mass gymnastics. It seems that the hotel in China is getting inspiration from across the border. Take a look at this video with commentary from our observer Lu Hai Tao. The video was filmed in the Arirang Hotel in Dandong, a city on the North Korean border. You see team leaders forcing young employees to recite slogans over and over again about their loyalty to the hotel and their gratitude to the guests. Then the young women throw themselves against a rope. It's a symbol of the difficulties they face. You can see they're exhausted. It's crazy. At the end, they bow three times for their parents, for their guests and for the hotel. There's nothing funny about it. It's scary. Those poor girls are very badly paid, too. That so-called company spirit reduces them to slavery. Why should they be grateful to this company? Unions are supposed to protect workers from this kind of thing, but they only exist in the public sector, and they're close to the government and don't really do anything anyway. It's common at Chinese companies to start the day with group chants and slogans, but not the kind of hysteria you see here. Maybe they were inspired by North Korea. Whatever the reason, it's way over the top. We finish today in the Islamic Republic of Iran with some points of view on sensitive social issues. Thanks to our observer Omid Habibinya for doing the interviews. In my city, I believe about 70% of people use satellite dishes. The police regularly comes to destroy them. I recently saw them take dishes from a roof near my house. They threw them onto the street, and a car came to collect them and take them away. Not long after, I noticed that this roof was once again covered in satellite dishes. Programs on state television, whether it's the news or entertainment, aren't worth watching. They're of poor quality. It's the main reason we turn to satellite television. During the last 10 years, having sex before marriage has become acceptable. Uh, something becomes acceptable in culture, uh, but not still in regulations. First time I kissed my boyfriend, we were sitting in a park. You can't imagine how was my heart beating because, it, not because of passion, because I was afraid of getting arrested by police. That's all for this week. As always, you can find more reports from our observers on our website, on our Facebook and Twitter pages, and on our iPhone app. See you next time here or online.